In section 5.4, we're going to look at exponential and logarithmic equations. An exponential equation is an equation that contains a variable and an exponent. A few simple examples would be 2 raised to the 3x minus 8 is equal to 16. Again, the reason why this is an exponential equation is because we see that the exponent has the variable x in it. Other examples would be like 4 to the x equals 15, or even something more involved like this where we have 40 times e to the 0.6x equals 240. There are many different ways oftentimes to solve an exponential equation, but perhaps the easiest method is that if you're able to take both sides and rewrite them so that they have the same base, a little bit of a typo here, it should be b to the n like this. So if you have the left-hand side is b raised to some power, and the right-hand side of the equation is the same base but raised to a different power, we can invoke the one-to-one -one property of the exponential function to say that if the bases are equal, and if the values are equal, then that implies that your two exponents must also be equal. That is, that m would have to be equal to n. So a common, this is a common technique for solving these types of exponential equations. The goal is to try and write both sides as some power to the same base. And then if you are able to successfully do that, then that would imply from the one-to-one -one property of exponentials that the two exponents would have to be equal. Okay. For example, let's take a look at Example 1a, we have the equation 2 raised to the 3x minus 8 equals to 16. The left-hand side is base 2. This is raised to the 3x minus 8. And we do notice that the number 16 is a power of 2. If you take 2 times 2 times 2 times 2, that gives us 16. Therefore, 16 is the same thing as 2 to the fourth power. And now we're in a situation where we have equal values and the bases are the same, so that implies that the exponents have to be equal. Okay? So the exponent of the 2 on the left hand side, which is 3x minus 8, has to be equal to the exponent of 2 on the right hand side, which is 4. This results in a basic linear equation that we can solve for x. We would add 8 to both sides. 4 plus 8 would give us the 12. And then divide both sides by 3. And we would get the solution x equals to 4. One of the things that's nice about equations, we know this, is that you can actually check them if you wanted to. Let me go ahead and plug in x equals 4 into the original equation just to show that this does work and it is the correct solution. If I take 2 times 3 times 4 minus 8, we're claiming that this is supposed to be equal to 16. In the exponent here, we have 3 times 4, which is 12. 12 minus 8 is 4. And we know from earlier that, again, 2 to the 4th is 16. So we plug the x value x equals to 4 in into the equation. It gives a true statement. And so that verifies that x equals to 4 is our solution to this exponential equation. Let's take a look at the next example. In part b, we want to solve 27 raised to the x plus 3 power is equal to 9 raised to the x minus 1 power. So starting off, we have two different bases here. We have base 27 and we have base 9. It's not easy or convenient, or maybe even possible for us at this stage, to write 27 as something as 9 raised to a power, nor is it convenient to try and find a way to raise 9 to some power to get 27. However, one of the things that we know about both 27 and 9 is that they're both a power of 3. For example, we know that 27 is the same thing as 3 to the third power. If you do 3 times 3 times 3, that gives us 27. 9 is the same thing as 3 squared. And so the idea is, is that we can rewrite both of these bases as a common base of 3. So what I'm going to do is everywhere I see 27, I'm going to write it as 3 to the third power. And on the right hand side, everywhere we see the 9, we can write that as 3 squared. So 
So 9 is the same thing as 3 to the second power raised to the x minus 1. To simplify this, what we have is a power to a power situation. And we remember from basic algebra that whenever you take a base and you raise it to a power and then another successive power, what we do is we multiply those exponents. So this ultimately is the same thing as 3 raised to the 3 times x plus 3 power. And over here, this is going to be the same thing as 3 raised to the 2 times x minus 1 power. We can simplify this by distributing. This is 3 raised to the 3x plus 9. Over here, this is going to be 3 raised to the 2x minus 2. So we did that simplification, and now we're in the same place we wanted to be from the last problem. We have an equality of two expressions that have the same base. We have some power of 3 on the left-hand side is equal to some power of 3 on the other side. The only way that can happen is if the two exponents are equal to each other. So we can now simply take the exponent 3x plus 9 and set it equal to the exponent 2x minus 2. To solve, we would now need to get all of the x's to one side. So let's subtract 2x from both sides. That will give us 1x plus 9 equals negative 2. And in the last step, we can go ahead and subtract 9 from both sides, and we get the solution x equals negative 11. So x equals negative 11. Again, if you're curious, if you wanted to try this, you can plug it back in, but that will result in a true statement. It's not always the case that we can write both sides of the equation using the same base. For example, if we look at 4x, 4 to the x power equals to 15. 4, in terms of its prime factorization, is something that's a power of 2. Whereas 15 is the product of 3 and 5. And so it would be impossible to write these two as um, the same base raised to a power. Same thing with something like this. Alternatively, one of the things that we can do if you're trying to solve an exponential equation is we can take a logarithm of both sides and we know that from the power rule of logarithms, the exponents can come down in front as multiplications, and that will allow us to solve the, the resulting equation. Okay. So what we can do is we can take the log of both sides, and because a log is a one-to-one -one property, if you have log base b of some value on one side is equal to log of, of the same base, log base b of a different value on the right-hand side, because log is one-to-one, -one, then that would mean that the two inside expressions would also have to be equal to each other. In terms of which logarithm you want to use, it doesn't really matter, um, but because a lot of times you're going to want the value approximated, you would want to use one of the two logs that's on the calculator, either the natural log, ln, or a common log. Um, for me, I'm going to go ahead and use ln for the most part because it's pretty popular, um, but you could use either. Let's take a look at example 2. We want to solve 4 to the x equals to 15. By looking at it, we know that 4 and 15 cannot be written as the same base. So let's go ahead and apply the natural log of both sides. We get to the ln of 4 to the x is equal to the ln of, of 15. According to our properties of logarithms, we know the power rule says we can take that x, bring that down in front as a multiplication, we would get x times the ln of 4 is equal to the ln of 5. And then from here, to get the x by itself, all we simply have to do is divide both sides by the ln of 4. When we do that, the ln of 4 cancels, so this will cancel with this, and what we get is x equals the ln of 5 divided by the ln of 4. And we would refer to this, this is the exact answer. So that expression, ln of 5 divided by the ln of 4, is the exact value of x that solves this equation. A lot of times we're also going to want the approximate answer, which would involve taking this thing and plugging it into the calculator. For this example, they say round it to the nearest hundredth place, which would be two decimal places. So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to pull up my calculator.
let's pull up the calculator. And then I'm going to hit the following. So we want to do the ln of 5. So I do ln 5. And then divided by the ln of 4. Hit enter. And to two decimal places, this is going to be about 1.16. So x is approximately 1.16. Oops, sorry, that's not right. Uh, somewhere I dropped my my 1 in here. So this is not the ln of 5. This is the ln of 15. Let's try that. So it's ln of 15 divided by the ln of 4. And so it should be approximately about 1.95. X is approximately 1.95. And I can tell you exactly how I knew something was a little bit off about that. But this is going to be the approximate answer. So if you're trying to ballpark a solution um, to this, if you're trying to get some intuition about it, just think of it like this. One of the things that we know is that what 4 to the first power is the number 4. 4 to the second power would be 16. The equation that we're trying to solve, we're trying to find out 4 to what power would give us 15. Well, if we're kind of comparing values here, obviously 15 is closer to 16 than what it is to 4. Therefore, the exponents can be somewhere in between 1 and 2. Furthermore, it would be closer to, to 2. So coming up with an answer of 1.95, you know, makes a, makes a lot of sense here intuitively. Let's take a look at the next example in 2B. We're in kind of the same scenario. We want to solve 10 to the x equals 120,000. We can't write both of these as exactly the same base. 120,000 is not a power of 10. So we're going to begin by taking the natural log of both sides. Take the natural log of the left-hand side. Take the natural log of the right-hand side. The second step would then be to use properties of logarithms, namely the power rule. We can take that exponent and bring it out in front as a multiplication. So we get x times the ln of 10 is equal to the ln of 120,000. And then the last step from there would be to divide both sides by the ln of 10. And we find that x equals the ln of 120,000 divided by the ln of 10. And this would be the exact answer. If we wanted the approximate answer, we could plug it into the calculator. We would do the ln of 120,000 divided by the ln of 10. Hit enter, and that would give us an exponent of about 5.08. So about 5.08. Take a look at example three. We again want to solve an exponential equation like right here. First thing we need to do is we need to get the exponential term by itself. So we were going to add three to both sides to start. This would say that 40 times e to the 0 0.6x is equal to 240. The next step would be to clear off the 40. We need to divide both sides by, by 40. So we get e to the 0.6x equals 6. We now have the exponential function by itself. It's not possible to both write both e and the number 6 as a, the same, a power of the same base. So we're now going to go ahead and apply logarithms on both sides. And I take, tend to like to use the ln, so I'll take the ln of both sides. The ln of 6. The next part would be to go ahead and use uh, properties of logs. This exponent can come out in front. We get 0.6x times the ln of e is equal to the ln of 6. We would now need to solve for x by dividing by whatever's in front of the x. But notice, too, that this part 
here, when we come up with the ln of e, that's one of our special properties. Remember, the ln of e was equal to 1. So it's just going to be 1 times 0.6x, which is 0.6x, is equal to the ln of 6. And then we can finish the problem off, divide both sides by 0.6, and we get that ln x is equal to the ln of 6 divided by 0.6. And that would be our exact answer. If we want the approximate answer, we can plug it into the calculator. If I take the ln of 6, I'm going to divide it by 0.6. And to the nearest hundredth, we would get an x value of approximately 2.99. And that is our approximate solution. Let's take a look at another one. In example four, we're asked to solve the equation. They want us to give the exact answer, and again, the approximate answer to two decimal places. So first things first, we have uh, each side. We have something with base five, something with base four. That's not something that we can um, write as a common base. Both exponentials are already isolated by themselves, so we can jump to that step of taking the natural log of both sides. The ln of 5 to the x minus 2 is going to be equal to the ln of 4 to the 2x plus 3. We're now going to use properties of logs that says we can bring each of these exponents out in front as a multiplication. So let's do that. This is going to produce x minus 2 times the ln of 5 is equal to the quantity 2x plus 3 times the ln of 4. So the good news is we were able to get rid of the exponential statements, and we have what is, amounts to a basic linear equation, although with some kind of unique coefficients here. Notice, too, that we also have x on both sides of the equation. So let's get rid of the parentheses by distributing. We're going to have x ln 5 minus 2 ln of 5 is equal to, here I'm going to distribute, we have 2x ln of 4 plus 3 ln of, of 4. Our next step is going to be to get all of our x terms on one side and all of the non-x terms on the other side. I'm going to try to move all of the x terms to the left-hand side. So let me get rid of this 2x ln 4 term by subtracting it from both sides. On the left-hand side, that's going to produce x ln 5 minus 2x ln 4 minus 2 ln 5 is equal to 3 ln 4. I've now successfully moved all of my x terms to the left-hand side, but there's this extra term right here that has nothing to do with uh, x, so we want to move that to the right-hand side. Let's add 2 ln 5 to both sides. So we're going to add 2 ln 5 to both sides. If we do that, we have now x ln5 minus 2x ln4 is equal to, on the right-hand side, we have the 3 ln4 now with an added 2 ln5. So far, so good. We have all of the x terms on one side, all of the non-x terms are on the other side, and now usually this is the step where you would just simply combine your coefficients. If you had 7x minus 3x, that would be 4x. You know, 10x plus 2x will give us 12x, etc. But we can't really add these coefficients because they're not like terms. So the alternative to this is to actually take the x and factor it out. So I'm going to factor in x out of both terms on the left-hand side. And what that will leave us with is we're going to have the ln of 5 and then minus a 2 ln 4, which is now a factor with the x.
And now we're done because we can easily get the x by itself at this point by simply dividing both sides by that factor. So divide both sides by the ln5 minus 2ln4, divide by the ln5 minus 2ln4, and we finally have our exact solution. It's going to be x equals 3ln4 plus 2ln5 divided by the ln of 5 minus 2ln4. And that is exact. We should also give the approximate solution to two decimal places. Let me get my calculator. Notice that we have a fraction, so I'm going to put the numerator and denominator in parentheses. We have 3 ln4 plus 2 ln5 and parentheses for that log. Now end parenthesis for the numerator, divided by parenthesis for the denominator, we have ln5 minus 2ln4. End parenthesis for the ln, and the parenthesis for the denominator, and hit enter. And we get to two decimal places, negative 6.34. So negative 6.34, and that is our approximate solution. Now let's turn our attention to logarithmic equations. As the name implies, a logarithmic equation is one that has a logarithm in it, where the variable is on the inside of the log. Some logs can be solved by just converting them simply to exponential equations. We know that the statement of the form log base b of m equals to c. Remember, there's three key pieces. We have the base, the exponent, and the value. The base is understated. It's uh, the subscript of the log. In the event that it's the natural log ln, it's base e. Common log, we know it's base 10. The value that it's equal to is in the side of the log, and then the exponent is on the other side of the equation. Log base b of m equals to c is equivalent to saying that b raised to the c power gives us the value m. One of the things to keep in mind, we will have to be a little bit careful here in terms of domain. The domain of any logarithmic expression, if you have log base b of, of anything on the inside, it's important to realize that the domain of that function is any values that make the inside greater than zero. Okay, so with a logarithmic equation, it is important and necessary to check your solutions because these types of equations will sometimes produce extraneous solutions. Let's take a look at example 5. We are asked to solve log base 4 of x plus 3 equals to 2. So first thing we notice is that the log is by itself. We can convert this to an exponential statement. The base 4 raised to the exponent 2 produces the value on the inside, which is x plus 3. At this stage, once we've converted it to an exponential uh, statement, this equation is easy to solve. 4 squared is 16. And then to get the x by itself, simply subtract 3 from both sides, and we get that 13 is equal to, to x. This is one that's very easily checked. If x equals to 13, we have log base 4 of 13 plus 3 equals to 2. That is log base 4 of 16 equals to 2. And we know that that is correct. 4 to the second power gives us 16. Therefore, log base 4 of 16 equals to 2. In general, I always say to check these. Um, but as long as your, your algebra is good and solid, you don't need to check the entire equation. All you have to make certain of is whatever value of x you get, that that value of x does not make a, a negative or zero inside of a log. So long as that is true, the solution should check out. Let's take a look at part b. Here we want to solve 3 times the ln of 2 to the x, excuse me, the ln of 2x equals to 12. First thing we want to do is get the logarithm by itself. So I'm going to go ahead and divide both sides by 3. 
This is the ln of 2x equals to 4. We're now going to convert this into an exponential statement. We know that the ln is base e, so it's e to the exponent of 4 produces the value 2x. And then to solve it from here, we're simply going to divide both sides by, by 2. So the exact solution is x equals e to the fourth divided by 2. That is exact. If you wanted to give an approximate answer on this one, you would find that x is approximately equal to 27.30. Again, on the next exam, I will be looking for both answers, by the way. I will want to see the exact solution um, written out, as well as the approximation where we will say specifically how many places to round to. Oftentimes, in order to rewrite it as a exponential expression, we need to make sure that we have a single logarithm on one side of the equation. So we want it to look like the log of something equals a value, and in order to do that, we may need to use properties of logarithms to condense everything to a single log. We see this in example 6, where we have log base 2 of x plus log base 2 of x minus 7 equals to 3. Before we can do anything, we have to rewrite the left-hand side as a single log, and we can use that, do that using the product rule. This is the same thing as log base 2 of the product of the values, which is going to be x times x minus 7 equals to 3. That is log base 2 of x squared minus 7x equals to 3. Now we have it as a single log. We can go ahead and rewrite it. The base 2, the exponent 3, gives us the value x squared minus 7x. This is a quadratic equation which we can solve. We have 8 equals x squared minus 7x. We want to get one side to be 0. So subtract 8 from both sides. We have x squared minus 7x minus 8 equals to 0. We can factor that side. That will factor as x minus 8. x plus 1 equals to 0. Set each factor equal to 0 individually. And we get two solutions, it looks like, x equals to 8, and also x equals to, to negative 1. Again, it's important to check these. I noticed that the value 8, when plugged into this expression, would produce the following. It would be log base 2 of 8 plus log base 2 of 8 minus 7 is 1. Does that equal to 3? Well, log base 2 of 8 is 3, because 2 to the third is 8. Log base 2 of 1, that's a property. Log base b of 1 is always equal to 0. So we get 3 plus 0 equals to 3, which does check out. So if we plug x equals to 8 into the original, it does work out, and it's a true statement. However, if we try to plug negative 1 in, this would produce the following, log base 2 of negative 1 plus log base 2 of negative 1 minus 7 equals to 3, and this is undefined. Right? You cannot have a negative on the inside of a logarithm, so the value x equals to negative 1 was actually an extraneous solution. So for this particular equation, we just get one answer, and that answer is x equals to Another common technique for solving logarithmic equations, especially if you have logarithms on both sides of the equality, is we can invoke the one-to-one -one property of logarithms. If we are able to write both sides of the equation as a single log of the same base, meaning 
if we have log base b of some value on the left hand side is equal to log base b of some value on the right hand side because logarithm is one to one that means that the inside values would have to be equal i.e. m would have to be equal to n and this property will be uh, common whenever you have uh, logs on both sides of the equation for example in question number seven we want to solve the ln of x plus two minus the ln of 4x plus 3 is equal to the ln of 1 divided by x. First thing we would notice is we have logs on both sides. So we want to condense each side till we have just a single logarithm. On the left hand side, we can use the quotient rule that says that this is going to be the single logarithm of the first value divided by the second value. like this. The next thing we can do is now notice that we have the ln of some quantity on the left hand side equals the ln of some quantity on the right hand side because we have log of the same base of two values that are equal. That implies that the values have to be equal. So we can simply take the things on the inside and set those two equal to each other. So that produces x plus 2 over 4x plus 3 is equal to 1 over x. And we now are going to solve this equation. You can do it many different ways, getting common denominators, um, multiplying both sides by the LCD, which is usually how we do it. I'm actually going to go ahead and solve this one simply by cross-multiplying. I'm going to take x times x plus 2 is going to be equal to 1 times 4x plus 3 that produces x squared plus 2x is equal to 4x plus 3. This results in a quadratic equation. To solve that quadratic equation, let's get one side to 0. In this case, I'm going to try and get 0 on the right-hand side. This will result in x squared minus 2x minus 3 equal to 0 which factors as x minus 3 times x plus 1 equals to 0. Set each factor equal to 0. We get two proposed solutions. One is x equals to 3, and the other is x equals to negative 1. Okay. And before we get too excited, we need to go back and check these. Let's plug x equals 3 into the original. And I'm not going to work it all the way out. But just notice that by plugging the value 3 in to any one of these logs will produce a value on the inside that's bigger than 0. So I'm confident and I know that x equals to 3 will be a solution. However, if you try to plug x equals to negative 1 in, notice that with this last term on the right hand side, that would result in ln of 1 divided by negative 1, which is the ln of negative 1, which would be undefined. So by plugging x equals to negative 1 in, that produces something that's undefined. So this one here is an extraneous solution. Okay. And it's important, too. I think for a lot of students, you've got to be very careful here. It's not the fact that the x value is negative. You can have negative solutions to log equations. Okay? It's perfectly fine to have a solution that's an, a negative value for x. The thing that cannot happen, and this is what's important, is that when the negative gets plugged into the resulting equation, that part cannot produce a negative value. Okay? Like for example, if I had, let's say, a log function like this. If I had the ln of, let's say, 5x uh, plus 10. I could take negative 1 and plug it, plug it into that logarithm because what would happen is I would get the following calculation. 5 times negative 1 plus 10, well, that's going to be negative 5 plus 10, which would be positive 5. So this function here is actually defined for x equals to negative 1. That's perfectly fine. Okay. Um, so it's not the fact that you have a negative value of x that makes it extraneous. It's what do you get when you plug that negative value back into the original. If that results in a natural log or a log that has a negative sign, then that particular value of x, whether it's positive or negative, would be an extraneous solution.